Buongiorno, I'm Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery, and today we're going to do Nona's favorite Italian cookies. And we're going to start with uh, one of my kids' favorites and our customers' favorites at the bakery is our Italian butter cookie that's dipped in chocolate ganache and has lots of sprinkles on it. And then we're going to do an amaretti cookie, which is a very delicious almond cookie. So we're going to start by creaming uh, a half a cup of butter and a half a cup of granulated sugar. And we're going to cream that until it's uh, nice and fluffy. And you might have to stop the mixer and uh, scrape the butter down a little bit uh, to keep it uh, getting emulsified with the sugar. But we want it to be nice and fluffy. And it's important that all of our ingredients for our cookies are room temperature. Uh, otherwise, the butter won't, won't completely uh, emulsify with the sugar. And this recipe is easily doubled or tripled. Uh, we make uh, multiple batches of this at the bakery and uh, it's one of the first cookies that the kids go to because it's so colorful and with the chocolate and all the sprinkles and, and the adults love it too. So it's a great cookie to have in the house. So we're going to add one egg, a large egg, uh, to the butter and sugar mixture. We're going to stop and scrape down again. Make sure everything gets mixed up really good. When I first started making these cookies in the bakery, no one in my community had ever heard of Italian butter cookies, but they soon became a favorite of everyone. And the nice thing about this cookie batter is that you can make different shapes. So we're going to do a, a pipe, a long pipe shape uh, in like a three inch um, length. But you can also pipe stars and put like a half a, a maraschino cherry in it or another piece of like a, maybe a one or two uh, fresh blueberries. So while this is mixing on low, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of almond extract. And then four to five drops of this very special seasoning called Flor de Cecile. Uh, you'll only need like four or five drops. In fact, in the bakery, I have a glass eyedropper, and that's how I measure this because it's very strong, but it's a citrus and a floral type of extract, and it's a traditional uh, Italian extract, but uh, you don't need much of it. It is very powerful, but it does make the cookies wonderful. I don't know of any grocery store that sells it. I do get it. I do order it special. You can get it on Amazon as well. Everything you, know, you can get on Amazon nowadays, I think. But we're going to go ahead and beat this again for about a minute just to let, make sure it's mixed well. And then we're going to add our flour. And we don't have to worry about adding the flour in increments. This is a cookie dough, so we're going to head and just dump it all in at once, which is kind of nice. Unlike cake recipes where you have to add a third of uh, the flour and then half the liquid and then another third flour and so on to build structure to the cake. We don't have to worry about that with our cookie. So we'll just mix this on low until it's well incorporated. And while that's mixing, I have a piping bag fit with a star tip. You can, uh, don't have to use the tip. It does make a nice design on the cookies, uh, kind of a fluted design. So the chocolate holds, holds to it better and it just makes a prettier cookie, and especially if you're piping stars or S shapes or any other shape other than what we're gonna do today. So. As you can see, the dough comes together. This is a very quick cookie dough. If you want something fast, this is the dough recipe or the cookie dough recipe for you because you don't have a whole lot to do to it. And then mix it up here and pipe it out. We like to usually chill this dough in the refrigerator for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, before you bake it so it doesn't spread too much. There is no leavening in this. There's no baking soda or baking powder that would cause it to raise. But if it's not cold enough, it can spread too much and the cookies become more flat rather than the shape that you might want it. So this dough seems to be pretty stiff, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about there too much. Let me get this out of the way. Here, we're going to go ahead and put this in the piping bag and get these piped out. What I like to do is pipe them before I put them in the cooler, otherwise the dough is too stiff to pipe and um, you just can't do it. I've tried and uh, it's, it's easier this way when the dough is a little bit softer to pipe it right away. One time I, I chilled the dough first. I forgot and I just put the dough in the, in the cooler and my husband couldn't even, didn't even have the strength in his hands to, 
to pipe it out of the bag. So it's just much easier to do it this way. So we'll just squeeze this down to the bottom. And you can see how stiff the dough is even now, just having it just made with room temperature ingredients. So you can imagine how stiff it would be if it was cold. It would be almost impossible to pipe. So I twist the bag several times because it's gonna take a little bit of hand muscle to, to pipe this out. So we just wanna pipe a long tube like this. And I usually have to grab a hold of the end of it because it's not like a pad of shoe paste where you can just And you just keep piping until you get them all piped out like this. And so if you want to do a star shape, you can just hold it down like this, twist it up a little bit, and you have a nice little star shape. And you can put like a half a maris maraschino cherry inside there. And uh, it's nice for Christmas. You'll see a lot of these cookies on, on our wedding platters. You know, the Italians, we don't do wedding cakes so much as we do cookie, cookie uh, towers. So we're gonna do the rest of these in our long shape so that we can dip them in our chocolate. Okay, so we're just about done piping our cookies out. So I'm gonna use some of these little spaces to pipe the star, another star cookie. So we're gonna put these in a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 13 minutes or until they're golden brown, light golden brown. We don't want them too dark. And when we uh, get those out of the oven, we're going to go ahead and dip them in some chocolate ganache that I've made, which is about four ounces of uh, dark chocolate and about a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. So we heat the cream and then put the chocolate chips or the chocolate wafers into it and um, melt it together and stir it together until it's nice and shiny. So we've already got that prepared. And uh, then we're, I'll show you how to finish off the cookies as soon as they get out of the oven. We'll see you back here real soon. So we're gonna start our amaretti cookies. So in our mixing bowl, I have two egg whites that I'm gonna whip until it's a stiff peak. Then we're gonna add some almond flour and uh, some castor sugar, which is just really fine granulated sugar. So if you can't find castor sugar, uh, if you do, it's probably gonna be expensive and it's easy to make if you have a food processor. Put that sugar uh, measured out into the food processor and turn it on and let it go for about 15 to 20 seconds and you'll have castor sugar. So we're gonna start whipping our egg whites. And while your egg whites are whipping, you can go ahead and measure out some uh, powdered sugar and some more castor sugar for rolling your cookies in. There's no measurements, it's just how much you're going to need. I start with about a half a cup of castor sugar and about a cup of powdered sugar to give you enough. And we have a tablespoon of amaretto uh, liqueur that we're gonna to add to the cookies as well. So there's basically only four ingredients. There's two egg whites, a uh, cup and a half of almond flour, and a tablespoon of amaretto liqueur and three quarters of a cup of pasta sugar. And one of the things that um, I like about the almond flour, um, the best almond flour that I have found, and I have tried a lot of different almond flours, is uh, Blue Diamond Almond Flour. Um, we have a Sam's store down in North Carolina where I'm from that sells it in the store, but you can get these in the five pound, we buy them in 10 pound bags from our supplier, but you can also get them on Amazon. So it does give a nice fine texture to the cookie and it doesn't have uh, a gritty uh, texture to the cookie. So this is the best almond flour that I've found for anything, even macarons, when we make the macaron cookies in the bakery. Let me check and see if these are done. And I'll show you what. Yeah, these are done. So we, we want a stiff peak so the egg whites can stand straight up because we're gonna to have to fold in the liqueur and the uh, almond flour. So it doesn't take long to beat it up. If you don't have a stand mixer or even a hand mixer, you can do this by hand. I whip egg whites by, my, by hand all the time, if, especially if I'm only doing one or two eggs. Um, egg whites, or you can hardly even get the mixer to touch the egg whites at that point, so you do have to mix it by hand. So what we're gonna do is we're going to 
add a little bit of the sugar at a time. And then we're going to fold in the almond flour. And if you remember from my, uh, our other episode, the folding, we don't want to deflate the eggs because we're working with egg whites. Now, um, our last episode, we were making cannoli filling and uh, cream corn filling. And so we didn't, um, we didn't have to be quite so careful about deflating the filling, but now we're working with egg whites, so we want to be a little bit more careful so that we have these beautiful egg whites whipped. And uh, so if you can see the texture, now the texture's changed a little bit. It's gotten a little bit looser, but now we're going to just add a little bit of the almond flour in at a time and continue to fold the almond flour in. And just like the butter cookies, these go together really, really quickly. And usually I like to add the flour by thirds. This seems to be a good number anyway, because you have to allow the egg whites to absorb the, the dryness of the almond flour. And then we'll add the liqueur at the very last. And so if you're worried about putting liqueur in your cookies, that you, you know, you're gonna get liquor and you know, you, any concern you have about giving this to kids, the, the alcohol bakes out. So you don't have to worry that you're giving your kids or grandma and grandpa any liquor in your cookies, but because um, it does bake out. But it does give a wonderful uh, finished flavor to the cookie. So now you can see that the, uh, the dough is kind of stiff now, and that's what we want because we're gonna be scooping this out and um, rolling it in our sugars. But we're gonna add our amaretto liqueur, and then we're gonna fold that in. And I think we're about, ready to roll here with uh, scooping them out. So if you don't have any kind of a scoop, you know, in the bakery we use measured scoops for everything so that all of our products are the same size. Um, but we'll use a tablespoon here, so that's what you have in your home. We're gonna take this and put this aside. And so on, we have a cookie sheet that has a piece of parchment paper. And again, I'm big on parchment paper because it doesn't stick then, so and sprayed with some uh, a baker's uh, joy so that it doesn't stick. So we've got a tablespoon of dough, and so we're just going to plop it in the castor sugar. And you know, you make a meatball out of it, kind <laughs> of go it back and forth. And then we're gonna roll it in the powdered sugar, like this, a little to shake it off. And then we're just gonna place it on the cookie sheet. And so we're just gonna keep doing that until all of the batter is used up. And again, you can make them bigger or smaller. This is your cookie. Uh, of course, if you make them bigger, or change the size from a tablespoon, you will um, have to change the baking time. So you just have to watch it and be really careful if you are changing the, the size of the cookie. So this is a, a hands job for sure. And it can be a little messy, but I think I've said this many times already in our shows that if you can't get your hands dirty, there's no fun in it. So get your hands in the dough. And this is a great job for the kids to do, the older children probably. I think the younger ones might think it's Play-Doh and just want to play with it. <laughs> so we're just gonna dust that off like that. You know when they bake, they get a little crinkly looking, which is nice. And then we're gonna roll them in powdered sugar again to finish them off because the dough will absorb a little bit of the sugar. And the dough is sticky, as you can see, but it works better with the hands. In the bakery, even with our scoops, um, it's hard to get it out of the scoop, so sometimes the fingers in a spoon work just better. These will come out and you can put them on your cookie trays for the holidays and I like to just to make holiday treats all through the year. I think I think it's fun. Now, there's certain things that we just do at Christmas or Easter um, but it's nice to do these special cookies throughout the year to surprise everyone. So we're going to finish uh, 
getting these rolled in our sugars and we're gonna put them in a 350 degree oven. Um, they'll take about eight to 10 minutes to bake. You don't wanna bake these too long. You want them to be chewy. Um, you don't want them to be like hard and crunchy. You definitely don't want that. But these amaretti should be nice and chewy and soft. And you'd think with all the sugar that we're rolling it in, in that they're gonna be really, really sweet, but they're not. They're not at all. Probably have one more in there. That'll give us an even dozen, huh? We couldn't have planned that one better. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get these in the oven now. I'm gonna clean up this area, and then we'll be back to finish off our butter cookies with our chocolate ganache. So we're back with our Italian butter cookies and we're gonna dip them in ganache, which uh, we've already previously made. I said it was about four ounces of dark chocolate, or you could use milk chocolate, uh, and about a quarter of a cup of cream. And we heat it up until it melts together and it's nice and glossy. So we want it in a kind of a taller, narrower cup because we're gonna dip them like this and shake off the excess. This is the fun part that the kids love. And then we just sprinkle them with all kinds of sprinkles. Now I like the small round parials because they're not as um, heavy as the other ones. You have a larger cookie. Sometimes I dip them at an angle. You can drizzle on it as well if you want. Um, you know, it's your cookie. You can make them any way you want. And this might be something fun for the kids to do as well. Um, but that's the finish. And that's, you know, it's very easy, very simple cookie. It comes together real quick. Not a lot of ingredients. But when I eat these cookies, I like to split them in half lengthwise so that I get ganache, get my chocolate in two pieces because I like chocolate. So. so, and that's the finished product. So we're going to go continue dipping, but if you want to cool these really quick so the kids can have them, uh, you can pop them in the refrigerator uh, for about three or four minutes and the ganache will sit just perfect. And there you have our Italian butter cookies. So this concludes our, our section on Ita favorite Italian cookies. I like to call it Nona's favorite Italian cookies because this is what grandma used to make for me. So, and I've shared them with my children and now I'm sharing them with you. So this is Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery out of Greensboro, North Carolina at rocasbakery.com uh, where we have our online store. You can go check us out and see what we're doing. Uh, until next time, see you later. We bake your day better.